Hi, everybody. Uh, thank you for inviting me, NDA, and lovely to meet people over in uh, Dublin on a very sunny day. We don't get a lot of sunny days over in Manchester, so this is a novelty for me. Um, what we wanted to talk about was that kind of spectrum of personalisation. Obviously, we've heard a lot of stories this morning from a range of speakers around the kind of experiences really interested to hear some sort of the international speakers and, and what we want to do obviously is contribute the sort of lived experience from the UK about the fact we've been implementing personalization for like four or five years now to show some of that experiences to talk about right to control which is a new piece of work it's called a trailblazer so it's a sort of the, some of the sort of challenges around the personalisation, around the different funding streams, not <coughs> in it being able to be merged. Right to control is about testing that. So what I'll do is just give you a very brief, quick, potted history of right to control, so it sets a bit of context so people understand what it's about. Myself, uh, I work, I'm working with the Greater Manchester Partnership, so that's five authorities coming together, and I'm sure people will be interested to hear how that happens, because that's, no, no, that's quite challenging in itself, kind of, five authorities working in partnership. And Justin is from Leicester, Leicester, another one of the Trailblazer sites, so he'll share his experiences. And what we're trying to do is kind of complement each other. Having only just met, we're working on that as we go along and kind of he, his, his expertise is in employment and mine is more on the social care and the housing related support side so hopefully we can address some of those issues in our presentations but really happy to have a conversation and pick up some of the themes from this morning and also you know it here answer some of your questions and any issues you've got we haven't got all the answers what we've come with today is sort of our messages and stories but we're learning by doing on this agenda and kind of what is useful for us to share with you is our kind of experiences of what's works, what working well, what not to do, what to do. But the kind of heart of all this is actually working with service users and co-producing a solution. And I hope that that comes over in the conversations we'll have this afternoon. Okay. Right. Okay, sorry, I'm left-handed. I am technically challenged in terms of talking and pressing at the same time. So, okay, Greater Manchester Right to Control Partnership. Just a bit of history with that. Uh, there is a real his a sort of uh, history of joint working across uh, what we call AGMA, which is the Association of Greater Manchester Authorities. And one of the issues that's been raised with us as authorities is that issue of people live in one area, work in another, you know, use services across all the sort of areas, not, you know, if I live in Manchester, I might go to Stockport for work, etc. And what we haven't really looked at in terms of personalisation is testing that joined up approach, the one stop approach to, to somebody's sort of holistic needs. So our ambition was to merge five authorities working together to streamline a lot of the kind of processes because a lot of our work, surprisingly enough, in local government is very process driven and we lose the focus of the person and that's really key message today is, you know, we can devise processes but at the end of the day the person should be at the heart of that and sometimes we've lost a bit of that value in, in the work we've done. So, we've got five partners, partner authorities, and we're also working with a user-led organisation, Breakthrough UK, and we're obviously working with two DWP area offices, and we work with the Greater Manchester Coalition of uh, Disabled People on the co-production and the design of the, of the process. So, right? Left. No, it's fine. It's, it's counterintuitive pressing left. Sorry. Anyway, there you go. So right to control. Came out, as I say, of the sort of message around personalisations there, but it's not kind of meeting everybody's sort of needs in terms of people don't just have needs around social care. They have housing needs. They have employment needs. They have, you know, the lived environment in terms of the disabled facilities grant element is, is kind of key. And what we've done is individually assess and... You know, we've all got different criterias, and that doesn't make it easy, surprisingly enough, for people in terms of navigating that really complex pathway that we don't necessarily enable people. And we do a lot of gatekeeping, as probably people are aware of that. 
Uh, so it was a kind of shift from sort of looking at what we were doing and actually moving into sort of a real kind of a citizenship approach to, to, to the, 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 the entitlement really around right to control. And it came through a, a reform bill and it's about as a shifting the balance of power and it's about disabled people being at the centre and in control of the range of support that is available to them. Uh, and it, as I say, it builds on personalisation. And at the minute, it's, uh, it's for people over the age of 18. But that's in included in all service user groups, so people with you know, mental health needs, older people, etc. So it's kind of everybody over 18 who has needs in the areas around housing-related support, social care, etc. The Office for Disability Issues uh, lead the project. Uh, and they're sort of the sponsoring organisation, work very closely with the trailblazer sites to kind of project manage this and progress chase and up, upwardly pressure the government in terms of some of the challenges that this project's raising around some of the quirky rules in our system, for want of a better term, which doesn't necessarily make things easy for people. And that kind of is exposing a lot of this through the work that we're doing. Um, and it focuses on the six, uh, six funding streams. So it's social care, disabled facilities grant, I, independent living fund, supporting people. And I don't know whether that people know what that is. That's a housing related support uh, facility for, for people in, in the UK, in England. Uh, and I don't mean, access to work and work choice. So that's the kind of six areas that we're looking at. So two of those are particular benefits that people would get through access to employment. Okay, cool with that. And I've sort of preempted myself. There you go, I should have just read it, shouldn't I? There you go. Um, so basically the aspiration and the vision about right to control is uh, by 2025, disabled people should have the same opportunities and choices as non-disabled people to improve their quality of life and be respected and included as equal members of society. So that seems a long time ahead in terms of that aspiration, but I suspect that people don't feel that they're kind of, we're anywhere near that as organisations in terms of valuing that the vision. So basically we kind of got some very clear customer feedback that people wanted a life and not a service, and that's been very much a clear message this morning. At the minute, it feels like a, a postcode lottery. Where you live, where you work, has impacts on the money you get, access to resources, etc., and the support that is around people as well. Um, massive issues about risk. I mean, there's another session talking about risk and safeguarding, and you know, England are exercised about risk in relation to personalisation, and I'm sure people will talk about that. But it's kind of something sometimes that people hide behind in terms of not really making change for people. And unfortunately, some of the social workers are kind of using that as a reason not to change. And I, I, I don't know whether that's an experience from other areas, but that is kind of, I'm not, I am a social worker, so I can say that in as much as, you know, embracing change and doing things differently is kind of you know, scary for some people and, and the kind of safeguarding agenda and risk is a real issue for a lot of people. But we need adult conversations about what that means for people, you know, and that's kind of what this is about. Um, the feedback is best support comes from other disabled people. So that is the, the kind of concept of peer support is really key in the kind of model that we're talking about. Using your community capacity, which was mentioned this morning, but also actually, you know, people use their own links and resources. The disabled gr group that works with us on designing it have worked together collectively to come up with a kind of shared vision of what they want from the work that, that we're doing in Greater Manchester. And the other issue is keep it simple. And we don't do that in government, as probably we know that. It's kind of, we make it quite hard for people to understand our processes. We're not necessarily transparent about our decision making. And I kind of think that's really a, a sort of salient point to say. You can make decisions about service support and you know budgets, etc., in a way that's clear to people. Still, you can still gatekeep, for want of a better term, you can still sort of say, this is the amount of money we'll give you, but you can do that in a way that's actually understood by people, and that's the bit we're kind of a bit stuck on at the minute on terms of that financial allocation process, which I'll let other colleagues talk about. 
Okay, so co-production's been a word that's been mentioned quite significantly today, and one of the things that the, the Manchester Trailblazer was commended for was the co-production of the actual original bid to be a, a trailblazer. And that was, we actually worked from the day one with the disabled design group. We, we basically designed all the systems, all the kind of things around support planning, everybody, all the disabled people are represented on work streams. And when I say represented, they are on an equal voice. They're not, you know, somebody's turning up. People are actually active members on the executive, executive group, are actually decision making, challenging. It's been really challenging, but good, good challenging. But, you know, we've had to really think outside the box in terms of the way we've actually designed and delivered this, this new kind of model, which is uh, starting to, to happen now in, uh, in, in Manchester. We've obviously offered training for customers, peer support, and that advocacy is kind of key. We heard that this morning again. And obviously working with your existing ULOs. So you've got user-led organisations actively out there. And we're not necessarily engaging with them to help support delivery. And that's the thing that we're doing locally. And then obviously we've got the, uh, the, the SIL, uh, which is our Centre for Independent Living. And we've commissioned a, a Greater Manchester uh, Centre for Independent Living on a kind of federation basis. So they're there to grow and support the local SILs within uh, ULOs within each of the areas. So they've got a kind of developmental role as well. Um, and again, disabled people are very active in delivering that support and service and training, etc. So our theory and where we're ambition, our ambition is to achieve and to get to over the two years of the work we're doing, and we started in April, uh, is to have one shared assessment process, one support plan, this model of a no wrong door, so that whatever you approach in the system, people can actually signpost you and give you the right information. Independent advocacy, brokerage and peer support. And that issue which I talked about earlier, about that portability, I know that's a word which it's about, you know, I live here and I work there and how do I kind of navigate your different sort of assessment systems. And that for the, the councils is quite challenging when we're all in a particular financial climate at the minute. So that's the kind of scene setting about right to control and I'll hand over to Justin now. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much.